Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm super excited here today to talk about the, the project I've been working on for quite a, some time called the S script. So what is S script? In a summary, is basically you can think of uh, if it's in one sentence, I would describe it as a, as a solidity, but for Bitcoin. So it can enable uh, developers to write smart contracts in some high level language. So hopefully that can bring more developers onto the BSV ecosystem to write smart contracts. So before we talk, dive into S script, I think uh, a natural uh, way would be look at why would we have S script. So because we have this thing called uh, Bitcoin script. So if you look at the quotes for, from Satoshi in the very early stages, it says he, when he first designed it, the Bitcoin is not only for money transfer. Uh, type, that's only one type of transaction. He designed uh, to, to be a rich scripting language such that it can enable you to write any kind of uh, contracts you can imagine, like uh, escrow, or uh, multi-party, uh, hash puzzle, R puzzle, you can, anything you can think of. So the way the Bitcoin works is you have the so-called UTXO. It's each UTXO you can think of as a coin, right? So the way you move, you show the ownership, you, uh, you prove you can move the coin is to say, the, so each coin you can think of is, uh, is put in a, in a lock as, as an output script, right? It's a locking script. So the way you move the coin is to, you have to find a key, you have to find kind of like a solution to this puzzle, you have locked this coin in, and then you can move it. So it has two parts, the lock script and the unlocking script. So this is just a little bit of a problem. Well, we haven't seen many smart contracts uh, transactions online on the mainnet because it's, it's so if, as Steve, I think I showed a few examples earlier, but you also have, I have another example from Enchain. So basically you, you want to write some function and it looks something like this. So I don't, about, I don't know about you, but to me, this is the, yeah, not very easy to, to write code in. So that's why we need some kind of a high level abstract to, to make it easier. So which, why I have this idea to call it script. So instead of writing whatever on the right, you write something on, something on the left. You, you, you see from the left, you can see the, the syntax is very similar to if people are programming Solidity or JavaScript, you can find this. You can have the usual syntax, you can define variables, you can define functions, you can do uh, assignment, all kinds of statements. So that's hopefully much easier to, to write a contract in. So for, for people who are not familiar with uh, programming language, you can think of on the, on the right, on the right side is a Bitcoin script. It's like a, like a human language. Let's, for example, it's, uh, we are in Seoul, right? So think of the right side as the uh, current language. We just landed here. I uh, don't know about you, but I speak uh, zero currents. But the Bitcoin, the cur people here only understand the native script, uh, which is current. But a lot of people, we don't speak current. So how do we, what do we do? We have our native language, like, I don't know, Chinese or English, so we can translate it to Korean, so local people can understand. It's the same thing here. The Bitcoin only understand a script, but it's not easy to, to write in the, this native language. So we design some high-level language, whatever we are comfortable with, and we compile it down to a Bitcoin native script. So here I just show a very, very simple example here. So what, what is the what does the language look like? So we have a very simple contract here, I call it test. So each contract you can think of is almost like a contract template. It's like a, if you are coming from object-oriented programming, it's like a class. So it has some parameters. So basically you, you have a type of contracts, and then for each type you can instantiate or you can initialize it with some parameters. And then after once you have this whole thing, you have the entire output script then which you can uh, put in transaction and do, it's just like uh, any other normal transaction. So the, the way 
it works here is it has this special function called a public function. So basically, the way you interact with a contract is you, from, in, from outside, you can call the public function. So as the public function, you can, you can think of as you give have some parameters. This, this almost you can correspond to the unlocking script. This is the, the key. You want to unlock the, the coins locked in this contract. So the, in this simplest example, so basically, uh, I initialize a, a number to be 10 in this case. So the way how you unlock it, you call this function with y. And this statement, this, this uh, special keyword required here, it says you have to, for this to be successful, you have to make sure every require has to be, whatever in the require param parameter, it has to be true. So in this case, easily, so whatever number you put in the locking script, you have to put in the same, same number to unlock it. So I think uh, that's enough talk, and I think I'm going to show a demo, uh, a running demo. So basically, I build uh, not only the compiler, but also build a, a web web-based IDE, so you, you can see. So for example, here this is the the contract we can uh, we saw earlier. So, so now we can, instead of 10, we can plug in any number. So let's go to run some code. So here, there's an editor. You can write a code in the S script language. Then you can go ahead and say compile it. Let's say compile this. Now it's good. And then I'm going to initialize it, meaning this is the only, whatever compiles is only a template, right? You have to put parameters into it so you can become a runnable on chain. So let's say, put uh, any number, let's say, say five. Okay, pick any number. Okay, now it's compiled. And so the way I call this number, now I can call, I can call this function, which you can see here is a, a public function here. So because I put five there, I also have to, in order to unlock it, I have to say, okay, now it runs successful, shows here. You can see this is the, the S script. This is the, the script, that com, the locking script that compiles into. So now, uh, can, we, can we go back to the slides, please? Can we go back uh, to the slides, please? Okay. So you can see this is the interface here. I'm going to show a little bit. This, this one seems simple, right? So probably for this, you don't have to use uh, high-level language. You can probably, uh, if you are like familiar with script, probably you can write it just uh, in native script. But imagine you have something fancier. So loops, OK. This is something interesting. Because when, when people usually think of a Bitcoin script, they always say the traditional, the conventional wisdom is it's not Turing complete. And one of the major reasons is says you cannot do loops. So hopefully I can convince them, maybe you can do it, but just do it in, not in the way you expect. So the way I show it here is you have this syntax called a loop, and then you have a body. So for loop, you have to give it a parameter. So basically it says, what's, what's the number of loops you want to run? So this means this, so internally, the compiler will just unroll the loop. So for example, loop three, it just will be compiled down to the right here. Uh, so uh, can we switch to the demo, please? So let me show you some uh, loops in script, in S script. So let's say, for example, here, I have a simple uh, code here. So basically, I have uh, this number. And I just, uh, it, you can think of it as uh, times three, right? Whatever number I put in. When I want to log it with y, I have to put number three times of x. So same again. I go there. I compile it. OK, now it says good. So I have to give it some number. OK, let me put uh, any number. Uh, say, let's say three. OK. So we know if it's three, uh, the three times three is nine. So you should put nine. Let's just uh, call it here. OK, now it's compiled. It says good. So you can see from the, 
the bottom is you, you, you kind of see it uh, you, uh, appear three times here, right? So that's where, where the unrolling of the loop happens here. So just for fun, let me put the, uh, some big number here just to show how it looks like. So let's say 30. OK. So I have to recompile it. And then just put any number, I say, uh, I don't know, uh, any number, 1. OK. So now, uh, if it's, I, I have to put, if I put a 9 again, it will fail. But you can, you can see from the, the screen, it's kind of like uh, unroll up to 30 times, right? Can, can we now go back again? So this is one use case for, I mean, ideally you can write everything in, in, on the right, right? But imagine, let's say now you want to loop, like, I don't know, one million times. It's not easy, right, to write. Just copy, paste it one million times. And uh, this, this is a loop example. And usually how we get this number, there are, uh, that's where the, a lot of business logic has to come in. You have to get an upper bound for, for the number of loops you need to run to make sure your, your algorithm is right. For example, uh, give a very simple example. You want to count the number of ones in a hash, 256-bit hash. So you, this number probably you can put uh, 256, right? Or if you run some other program, you don't know the exact number, then you can write, uh, one way is to you write offline, off-chain. Then you can know exactly, uh, or from some other theory, you can also know this, uh, this bound. And then, again, also another one is you can also write, define your own function inside the S script. Here is give a very, very simple example. So this, you can, you can have a sum function. It takes two integers, and then return the sum of it. So uh, this will be very useful if you write any sophisticated uh, script, right? You need to define your own reusable function unit. So now can we go to the demo again? Going to show the sum example. So here you can still compile it. OK, for here, instead of put one parameter, you have to put two, a and uh, x and y. Let's say put, uh, let's say two, also uh, four. OK, now it's compiled. I want to say the sum, two plus four is six, right? Oops, six. So say unlock, OK, now it runs good. Uh, here, let's say, giving you some more interesting example. Let's say what if fails, let's say unlock it. OK, now it says false. So it's like any other IDE. When, when there's, uh, the program doesn't run as you expect it, you want to have some kind of like a tools to help you debug, right? So here on the right side, it has a debugger. So you can enter, enter into debug mode. So it lets you do a lot of things, like any other standard IDE. So for example, the easy, easiest way would be you can run uh, uh, step through it, uh, line by line. You can see the lines are highlighted, as I highlighted here. Oh, sorry. So it's highlighted here, the lines are here, the opcode which is running is here. I can step by line, line by line, or I can step through it uh, opcode by opcode, of one, of zero. And also as I step through it, you can also look at the stack. So here basically shows the main stack. I'm also, uh, you can also look at the, that's another stack down there. It's, uh, it's alt stack, because now it's empty, so I'm not showing it there. So basically, not only you can sh see the stack, but you also can look at all the variables. What are the variables here? You can say, as you step through it, these are keep changing, and then you can find out, you can step it. Also, you can do a uh, breakpoint. Let's say you can click, click to the, Let's say to the right of this, you can right of this in the toggle, and then you, if you run, say, continue, you just run to the next breakpoint, and it, now you can run it again. Okay, so hopefully this can help you identify where, where the problem is. You can also toggle it if you don't want any breakpoint again. Okay, uh, can we go back to the slides again? So uh, besides the ones where I've showed also have some uh, building functions that's provided by the script itself. Most famously, math uh, functions, hash functions, 
and also the signature verification uh, ones. So these are the, the comps with the script language itself. But if you have any other customized uh, ones, you can write, always write your own. So what's next? So of course, this is, uh, this is something that works today. You can try it on. And, but there are a lot of, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, far from uh, like a full future language. So you can have, uh, for example, something missing is you can have more, uh, more abstract uh, data structures, like say map or, or list. So that's one thing. And also you, the IDE, of course, this is very primitive. So you're going to complete all of those too. And also I'm going to have some, because this is just for you to, to run something, quickly test it, quickly run it. To, to validate uh, your contract, but if you want to integrate into your, let's say, your apps. So it's, there's some SDK, so you can say it's like, uh, let's, for example, JavaScript, you can re require the NPM package, and then you can say there's a compile, compiler, uh, JavaScript compiler, then you can put your source code in S script format, and then you give you other output for the out, out script. And also the, the final product will be, instead of a web-based, for now we'll have a desktop version. It's like a Visual Studio Code or IntelliJ. It's just like a, just to streamline the process. So any other, you don't have to know Bitcoin or, add, or script to, to start building smart contracts on, on top of Bitcoin. So uh, this is pretty much the end of the talk. So uh, I would like to, Thank uh, foremost uh, Dr. Craig Wright to give me the idea to work on. And also a lot of people helped me along the way. I think uh, most, it's not uh, to be <laughs> comprehensive. Ang Chen and Yi Chang helped me with uh, ID and Steve, Steve Shadows and uh, Ryan Charles and Jerry and uh, Brandon Lee and a lot of people in the Slack channel. So if you want to try it on, this is the, the website you can go to, uh, script.studio. And the full documentation is uh, also listed here. And uh, that's it. Thank you.